Moving into the late classical period now, this statue is called Hermes and Dionysus, that's the infant Dionysus in Hermes' hand, and it's dated to 340 BC, and it was found inside the temple of Hera at Olympia. Its sculptor was a man called Praxiteles, and in terms of whether this is original marble or not that we're looking at, well, that's debated. Uh, just to give you some arguments for and against, so in terms of it being an original, it's very, very high quality, but on the other hand, people have a look at the struts supporting the marble, and also the fact that part of it is unfinished, a strap on the sandal and the back is still very rough um, and they think that wouldn't have been something that a sculptor like Praxiteles would have done. So it's just a bit worth being aware that the debate exists. Now some of what we can see with the style of this statue is borrowed from Polychaetus who made the Doryphoros or the spear bearer. So for example you should be able to see the trailing foot and also that the statue is in contraposto and just a reminder that the contraposto is where we have got the hips and the shoulders that are bent in opposite directions. There we go. However, Praxiteles is very innovative in his own right. So he adapts it and takes some of that posture further. So for example, the raised arm accentuates the contraposto. It kind of tilts those shoulders even further. And what it does is it creates an effect in the body known as the S-bend, which from the back is even more pronounced. As well as that, Praxiteles also integrates supports into his narrative, so he makes them part of the story. Uh, and we can see that drapery that's hanging down from his arm is probably the baby's cloak, or even perhaps his traveller's cloak, but either way, it's of relevance to the story. And we're going to see more statues from Praxiteles where he has done that. On top of that, he really likes to humanise the gods. If we think back to the early classical period with gods like Zeus of Artemisium, they were much more kind of fear-evoking. However, this time, Hermes looks quite approachable. Uh, and there's a variety of things that Praxiteles has done to give this impression off. First of all, the activity that he's doing is very humanised. He's babysitting. Uh, and that's relatable. On top of that, his expression is known as dreamy, not severe, and his hair is more naturalistic, known as tousled hair. He's also got much softer, smoother muscles, um, much more so than the gods, or even mortals for that matter, in the early classical and high classical period, where it was all about exaggeration and kind of showing strength and those idealistic bodies. So the softer, leaner muscles here, as well as the fact that his head to body ratio is one to eight, so his head's slightly smaller and overall a more elegant appearance to the statue, again, feels that he is more humanised as a god and therefore relatable. As well as that, the fact that his arm would have been holding grapes uh, to tease the baby Dionysus, that also adds a little bit of light humour to the scene. So we're looking at gods in a very different way in this late classical period. But it's worth noting, certain types of gods, Zeus is still to be feared.